Okay, guys, we're going to get started. Today, what we're talking about is um, utilizing a home evaluation uh, tool, run a campaign, and have follow up uh, for that specific campaign. So, right now to capture sellers, and we probably have a lot of buyers out there, but less listings. Um, so, if we want to start capturing more people who want to sell their home, um, running a Facebook ad is definitely great, uh, but we need a way to capture their information and then we want to be able to follow up with them. And one tool that I like to use is the Google Forms platform. So since you guys all have a KW email, whether you use it or not, you don't have to use it to be able to use the uh, G Suite portion of this. Um, you do get Google Forms as part of your G Suite with KW. Now you can also just Google Google Forms and you can sign into your Google platform um, if you have a regular Gmail as well. All right, so um, if you don't have Google Forms, um, then just go ahead and go to googleforms.com and you can get logged in there. Now I'm on my KW email, that's my primary, um, and that's where I have all of my forms listed. Now, um, you can use a um, pre-existing form if you prefer. However, I like to use a blank form and just start from scratch. So the idea is to create the form and I'm going to show you an example of one that I've created. So this would be a home value or what is your home worth form and it's going to ask some very pertinent information about um, their home and their contact information so that we can uh, let them know what the value of their home is. Now there are a lot of home estimate or home value tools out there um, and they give like a number right away to people and that's not what we want to do. We don't want to be Zillow. We don't want to give them a Zestimate of their home and then never hear from them again, right? So the whole idea is to be able to capture their information and then get on the phone or get in front of them so that you guys can start developing a relationship which makes them turn from a lead to an actual contact and a potential client, okay? So um, if you're starting from scratch, um, you're just gonna create a blank form. And these are the questions that I like to ask. I'll show you guys how to build it out in a second. Um, but we have the title of our form. We have uh, the info we wanna capture. So first name, last name, email, phone number, and you can see some of these have red stars next to them, and that means that is a required field. All right, so we definitely want their email. We do know that sometimes when you ask for people's phone numbers and you make it required, you do lose the number of people who will actually fill out the form, so phone number can be an optional field. Um, obviously, we want to do address. Um, and so that we can look up their home. And I have formatted mine so that I have address, city, state, zip. Now I formatted it that in that manner because when people fill this form out, it's going to go into a spreadsheet. And this is the format of that um, command likes to um, have you input the address information. Okay, so when it's in a spreadsheet, I can then put it into the upload template very easily and upload any um, people who've actually filled out this form. So the one disadvantage is that the people's information doesn't go straight into command, um, but we do have it in a form that we are able to import or upload into command. So whatever your preference is. If you're going to be hand typing these um, contacts in anyway, you can do it whatever format you want. I just like this option so that it's much easier when I want to import it into command. So I have address, city, state, zip, how many beds, bedrooms, and you can see that it is a multiple choice option. 
how many baths, multiple choice option, and then a question of any updates on the home. OK, now you can build this form out however you like. Sometimes people like it a little bit longer and sometimes people like it to be just the bare bones so that more people will fill it out um, and then call them or email them and um, follow up with the rest of their questions. OK, so that's totally up to you which manner in which you would like to do that. Now, once you have this form, you can then share it on multiple platforms. So you can either put this right into Facebook. The, it's going to give you a link. If I go to, oops, not settings, sorry. Send. It's going to give you a link option. So you could put that right into social media. Uh, you can email this directly to your clients from within your Gmail or uh, we can embed this onto our website, which is the, the version that I like to use. So you can embed the form onto your site, your agent website, using an uh, iframe code. And let me just show you what that looks like. So this is my website. It's just a, a, a mock one, guys. Uh, what is your home worth? Right there I have as a drop down option. And right here is a form. Now, this is another version of the same form. Uh, you can see I have a little bit different styling on it. All right. I also have when do you need to sell by um, and preferred contact method here. And then they can go ahead and submit right on uh, my website. And the great thing is as long as you have this set up correctly as far as responses, goes and that we have uh, get an email notification whenever you have a response to this, um, then we can just easily contact the people and get notified right away. And that's going to be connected to whatever Gmail or email that you have uh, built this form on that platform. So if it, you're not using your KW and you built this form on KW, I highly recommend forwarding all of your KW emails to your primary email, um, which is a really easy thing. If you need help with that, let me know. I can show you guys how to do that. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to quickly show you how you build one of these forms, uh, the method of embedding it onto your site, and then running an ad campaign to that specific uh, site. OK, so I'm just going to come back out to my blank form. All right, so we're going to choose a blank form. Your form is untitled, so you just name your form. Oop, and I got caps lock on. All right, we have a form description right below. Right, you can make it whatever you want. Now, question one. Now, obviously, we want their name. We usually start out with name. Um, so we're just going to click on where it says question one. It's going to highlight. And I'm just going to put in name. Now, that can be first name. And then we do a second one for last name. Or you can just do name. OK? Now, the Google form is pretty smart. So it's seeing that you're requesting a name. So it's automatically saying, how do the, your person filling out the survey or, or the form, how are they going to answer? So it's a short answer. So it is something short. They can just quickly put that in and they can hand type their name in there. All right. Now, this is something you'd want to be required, right? So you just go ahead and make that required. Um, if you do not want it required, you keep that toggle off. So that little purple toggle shows that it is a required section. All right. So what's the next thing we want to ask for? All right, name, address. Maybe you want to do of home. <laughs> um, name, address, 
email, phone number is basically the main contact information that we want. Now, again, we can just keep it as a short answer and we want that to be a required field. All right, um, next we can go ahead and we can type in our next one. So email, short answer again, required. And then I just keep hitting this plus sign to get a new question. Next question, phone number. And I'm not gonna make that one required for myself, um, but you definitely can. Some people are would like that a requirement. All right, then we're gonna go into how many beds or bedrooms with a question mark. All right, and you can leave it a short answer or we have a couple other options of how they can answer this question. So if I hit the short answer drop down, uh, a paragraph would be something very long. So I'm gonna use that at the end if I'm asking for uh, any other remarks. We have a multiple choice option a checkbox option or a drop down option. So I'm gonna use the uh, drop down option. And what do I want my, my first option to be? I'm gonna do one, all right? And when I type the number one, again, Google Forms, very smart. It's suggesting, do I wanna add all these others? So I just hit the word add all and there we go. All right now you can come in and you can adjust these. So like if I wanted to put a plus sign there, I could do something like that. Um, and then you can add a sixth option if you wanted to. Um, you could add less or more. So you could just take these away. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna leave it as is and I'm gonna make that a required field. All right, next question. So guys, just build this out to whatever standards you want. There are lots of examples online. Um, say instead of the drop down option, you did want a multiple choice. All right, so then you could just do one like that. And again, it's being smart and it's gonna do multiples. So you can see that's something that they're going to click on. And if I wanted to do plus again, like that. All right. So I'll show you what those two look like uh, when you're answering the question, okay? They also give you this option down here that says add other, all right? So if we hit add other, other will be an option. So they could just type it in. So they could say um, two bedrooms with a finished basement that has potential for a bedroom or something like that. So you could add the other option as well case they're unsure of how they should be answering. All right, so then we're gonna go into, um, I'm gonna just make this one short for you guys. We don't have to do all of them. I'm just gonna say any updates. Come on. All right, we can do yes, no, maybe, or as a multiple option, or I can just put in a paragraph style, which allows them to answer it in text style. Um, just fill in whatever they want. All right. <clears throat> so say this is, I'm actually gonna add one more and it's uh, preferred contact method. All right, and then I can do at all, email, phone, mail, perfect. I love that these forms are so smart. Okay, so that is my form. All right, now we can make it look fancy by using this little painter's palette over here. You can put a header image on here. Now they do come, there are some stock ones here. Um, I don't know that any would be super great for what we're looking for, um, but you might find something in here. All right, illustrations, there's holiday ones. Um, I don't know that there's any home ones, but I'm just, I'm just gonna, you know, choose pizza because that sounds good. 
<laughs> All right, so you got a header up top there. Uh, you can obviously uh, upload your own image, okay? So if you have a, br a branded header you like to use or social media header, or if you're fancy schmancy and you go into Canva and you create something with nice text on it, you can do that as well, okay? You can also change the theme colors. So depending on the header, it will change these, but you can add whatever color you want. So if I want it to be... Um, the red color, I can add red, um, I can change it up, I can do green. All right, I'm gonna just do red. Background color, you can have it white um, or any of these other light to medium shades. Um, and then font style, uh, I currently have it on basic. We also have decorative, which is a script. It is a little hard to read, guys, just FYI. Formal is the other one that most people choose because um, it's just like a serif. And playful, not super professional, so, but it looks like it's a little bit like handwriting. So I like the basic. I'm going to keep my basic style. Okay. Um, you can add other things into this form, guys, including images, uh, titles, and text. Um, you can add, oops, sorry. That's not what I wanted. So if I wanted to upload an image and drop an image inside there, I could. I could also add a video, all right? So if it's a video, like an intro video to you and your team or something like that, you could always do that. Now this is going to be um, URL, copy and paste from YouTube. Um, so you want to make sure that's already on a platform. And then you can add separated sections. So you can group certain things together. Th this is a real basic form, guys. You really don't have to get too fancy with it. All right, so I have my form. What is my home worth? I have made it look the way I want it to look. All right, then I wanna make sure that I come into the response section. And this is once the forms are filled out, you'll be able to see all individual responses here. You're gonna see it will create a spreadsheet for you. All right, you wanna make sure you hit these three dots, the ellipsis here, and you hit get email notifications. All right, so that way when somebody fills it out, you're not just, it's not just hanging out there and you gotta keep checking in on it. You actually get um, a notification. Now, another option you have here is to select a response destination. So say you have a team and you have multiple forms out there and you all want it to go to one form or you have a pre-existing form and you want those responses to go onto that form, you can hit select response destination, select an existing spreadsheet. Right now it's creating its, its own new spreadsheet. All right, so we're gonna leave that as is. Um, but we can select a existing one and it's going to, if I hit select, it's gonna pull from your Google Drive and the spreadsheets that you have currently on that one, on that drive, okay? So you wanna make sure that you're accepting your responses, you're getting a notification. If you want it to go a specific place, you can do that. You can also just download um, the response is quickly right here by hitting download and it'll download in a CSV format. All right, now it's saying waiting for responses. We don't have any responses yet. All right, um, we can preview what this is form is gonna look like. So if I hit preview, all right. So it's indicating the reds are required. Name, address, email, phone number. This was the drop down option guys, okay. So they can do that. This was the multiple choice option. So all your options are actually visible. All right. Now other, if that it would have been, it's like they're unsure. They're like, oh, I have two bathrooms and then like a half bath. In basement, something like that. So they can, they can um, do three plus half bath and basement, something like that. All right, you can clear it, redo it. 
okay? But it will only let them do one response, all right? Any updates, this would be just, you can see how many times I can go down. It's a long area, it'll expand to their answer. And then preferred method of contact, that was a multiple choice as well, all right? So multiple choice or drop down. I like the drop down just because, you know, it's more a condensed version, but some people like to see it all visually. All right, so that's what your form is going to look like. Oops, let me come out of here, come back here. All right, now um, we want to come into the settings section. All right, now we are already asking for the email inside of the form. So if you weren't asking for their email, this collect email addresses would be, they'd fill out the form and it would make them put their email in to actually submit the form. But I'm not gonna check that since I already asked for it and made it a requirement inside of my form. Now, this is another one you wanna make sure you turn off. So it says restrict to users in Keller Williams Realty because I'm using my KW uncheck that so anybody can fill out this form. So important step there. Uh, limit to one response, that's up to you. Edit after submit, allow people to come back and edit it if they want to. All right, see summary chart and text responses. Then we can come over here into the presentation. So show a progress bar, so if you have a very long form, people can see how far they are and that they're almost done. Shuffle the question order. That would just be for like a more like a survey. We want to keep the order in which we're in. Um, show link to submit another response. And then right here is your confirmation message. So this is where we can say thank you for filling out the Now you can make this, you don't have to say that somebody's gonna get in touch with them. It is nice that um, they see a response like, oh, somebody's gonna call me, somebody's gonna email me. Um, I wouldn't put a time like, uh, somebody will be responding within an hour. Don't do that because then that puts you, you know, on the spot. So thank you for filling out the home evaluation form. We will be in touch with you as soon as possible. All right. And then uh, a we don't need the quiz section. All right, so that's my confirmation. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save. All right, so my form is basically all set, all ready, and I just have to do something with it, right? I have to share it with somebody. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit send, and I can either do the email method where I just email right here, or I can use the link. Now, I like to use this here as well, this shorten URL. All right, it just kind of condenses, kind of it's what like Bitly does and condenses it. All right, or we can use the embed. Um, so this is an iframe code. It already has the width and height set in there. So we can copy this code by hitting just copy. All right, so my form is done. Now I just have to put it in its place. So I'm gonna come over into my command and if I want to put it on my actual website, um, we're going to head on over to the consumer section. Now, you don't have to do this step. You could just use the link in your campaign. Um, but a lot of people want them, uh, people to end up on their branded site instead of after they fill out the form, there's, there's really nothing more for them to do. This will allow them to be on your site and they can look at other resources and search for homes and all that jazz. All right. So we're going to hit create a new site in the top right. And we want to choose the first option, which is on my agent site. If you do this one, guys, it is going to create a just singular landing page. I want this on my site, right? Because also people who are just on my site can fill out this form. They don't have to come from the actual campaign. Select page. 
All right, and then we're going to title our page. What is All right, and then I'm going to bring on over. Now you can see on my site that I am using a pre existing layout. So that has an image here, text, and then it comes into my actual form. Um, let me just see if I did it the other way. doesn't look like it looks like I took the other way off. The other way is going to be much more difficult if you're just trying to add um, text blocks. Uh, you're going to have to do some layout um, work to make it look nice because um, if you just do a text block it's going to be the form's going to be right up here at the very top. There's not going to be any header. There's going to be no images. So I say make it easy for yourself and use one of these pre-existing um, pieces. So I'm going to use the agent profile. So I'm going to bring that on over, pop that in. Now we know we already have an agent profile. So what I'm going to do is re repurpose this. So hit configure the widgets. This step is a step a lot of people forget about when they come back to the video. <laughs> configure the widget. All right, we're going to click on the agent profile. Now we're going to just repurpose all of this. So you can change the image here. Um, let me just pull in an image real quick here of something. All right, I'm just going to pull that in. Okay. And page title, which currently says my name, that's where I'm going to change that to. What is your home worth? company enroll. You could just take that out if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to put in uh, find out All right, bio title. All right, now we could just put like a space or something in there if we wanted to. I liked, um, you could do like start here. It only takes a moment. Okay, whatever you want. Now we're gonna take out this agent bio. So this was a bio that filled in from your marketing profile. And this is where we're going to utilize that embed code. So remember over here on this form, we copied this iframe code. All right, you can either, now if you're on a Mac, highlight it. Doesn't always like when you just hit this copy. I don't know why. Um, and then we're going to put that right here in the agent bio section. All right, and you're not gonna see anything until we hit save and apply. I'm gonna leave my contact here, contact information. All right, hit save and apply. And there is my form. Now, when you do the embed method, you don't get the header. The header doesn't come over. All right, so you can, um, that's really only for when they're looking at it on the Google platform. So my little pizza guy didn't come over. <laughs> All right, we can also adjust things like width and height if we wanted to. So if I wanted to make it a little bit wider, I could hit save and apply. And it never likes when I do it while I'm on Zoom. It works perfectly every time I'm not on Zoom. <laughs> Um, but you can adjust the sizes um, using the height and the width um, option, okay? So um, once you have that on your page, come down, you can see it, it has the whole thing on there. I'm going to just hit save changes, Let's see if it lets me save it. 
All right, it's gonna bring me right on over into my site pages section. If for some reason you clicked out of it, it didn't take you or something happened, if you hit site and app settings while you're in this consumer section, site and app settings, this is where we want the site pages. All right, and we're just going to add that as a new page. All right, so add page. This is the new guy. I've got the three question marks. Hit continue. All right, it's going to say, what do you want to name the page? So what do you want in the drop down? Like this one says, what is your home worth? I'm just going to put home value. Value page. All right, match your slug. Home dash is for spaces. Value dash page. All right, you can put in your SEO description, uh, Google form to find. You wanna include the your branded content in here, like who you are, what you do, where you do that. Uh, I'm just gonna keep it short and sweet for the class today. And we're gonna go ahead and hit save. So settings were updated successfully. If I come on down, here is my home value page. I can move this anywhere I want. So if I drag and drop it all the way back up to the top, I'll just put it in front of this one. Now, when I come on over to my home page, let me just refresh the page on my site. Drop down, home value page right here. And boom, there it is. It's there. They can submit. See my little progress bar. Okay, so the whole thing ended up on there. Like I said, you could mess with the dimensions a little bit if you want to. I don't mind that it's kind of yuxed over to the side. Uh, I'd pick a nicer image, you know, something with like, uh, uh, you know, a nicer image there. You can change this text to whatever you want. Okay, so now I have the page. I'm gonna copy that URL. You actually don't have to, um, but you can sh share that URL wherever you want. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I am going to um, start a campaign for this. So I'm gonna come back into command and I'm gonna head on over to my campaign section, which is just my little megaphone here. All right, and I'm gonna hit create a new campaign. And I'm gonna create a paid social ad, or you could do just a regular social post, but we're gonna do the paid one because we're really gonna try to capture some new listings, right? So um, what is your home worth? All right, and what are we trying to do? We are um, attracting listings. So that's what we want. Try to stay away from this other option, guys. Um, it just takes longer, it seems, for your um, campaigns to get approved when you do that. We're gonna determine which platform are we putting uh, this on. I'm just gonna do it on Facebook today. Hit set up campaign. All right, now we didn't have that pop up for the listing. Uh, we don't need that. So right here, it's saying thinking of selling, not sure if now is the right time, can we help? you find out what your home is worth in today's market, contact us today. So if you wanna use that suggestion, you can, or you can hit shuffle. All right, all right, so I'm gonna use the suggestion. Now, I don't want them to contact today. What I want them to do is um, click below. To or click below to start your free home evaluation today. Okay, 
So, oh my gosh, what is going on? Awesome. Okay. And then headline need to move. Again, we can shuffle that. What is your home worth? I'm going to use that suggestion um, and use that suggestion. Find out what your home is worth in today's market. Um, whatever you want to type in there, you guys can type in. It is required field though. So you've got to put some sort of text in there. All right. You can use emojis, stuff like that. Um, now it's time to add the media. Okay. So we can add images um, of like just like a home we can find images we also can pull in from our um, design library so in the design library they already have a bunch of things like this so do you know the value of your home i'm going to just use the one that i brought over into my library i'll show you guys where you can find those then uh, but you could just find a uh, picture of a house, one of your pictures of your homes, whatever you want. All right. And we can choose whatever style we want. I'm going to go with the square. Save. All right. If I want, since I chopped off my logo, I can pull in a um, Keller Williams logo here so that it's ghosted in on to my piece here if I want to. All right, now I'm not advertising a listing or anything, so it's not that big of a deal. All right, you can also, um, I'm just gonna hit save. You can leave it off if you wanted to. All right, so configure the ad. Which page is it going on? It's going on my Keller Williams real estate page. And we want to, um, now you have two options. We can either use the Facebook lead generation form. It's gonna make them fill out the form, but we don't want to do that since we're trying to capture them on our form. So this is the one time where you're going to switch that over to use a site or landing page, all right? And then this is where we're going to put in our destination URL. So I have that copied and pasted. Also, if you hit choose landing page, it should be in here. Let's see if it's in there. Oh, home value page. It's already in there. Perfect. All right. Target. Where am I targeting? It's going to automatically be um, around my market center since I don't have a uh, listing attached to this. All right. So I'm going to leave it in Bethlehem, 20 mile radius. We can add interest. So this would be a great time um, if we hit this little drop down. They do now have them listed here. All right. So if real estate related items, so the, the trifecta, Z Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, um, anything to do with mortgages, budgeting, um, things like that. So you can go through, you can add whichever um, whichever interest that you like here. And that's a trial and error kind of situation, guys. Um, you can do more, you can do less. Um, some people are saying six is good. Other people are saying do the whole lot, as many as you want and as many as you can. So <laughs> it's up to you guys. Um, so add your interest. And then now we are going to get into our duration and budget. The default is 10 days, um, $30, which would be $3 per channel because I only chose one channel. You can switch this up. Um, I think 10 days would be long. So I would probably say like seven, seven days. All right. And then you can bring this down a little bit so it's not quite as high. So we'll, we'll just do say 15 bucks. All right, that's $2 a day per um, channel, 214, whatever you guys want. Um, again, trial and error with that. Four to five days for a listing though, make sure you're using the square photos. All right, try to use, um, if you're gonna do multiple images, try using not the 
front picture of the house. Um, try a nice interior shot. Um, and that's for advertising a listing. But for something like this, um, we can keep it a little bit longer up there and uh, we can keep our budget around $2. All right, so once we have that ready, we're just going to hit publish that campaign. All right, it's going to tell you what you owe to for the actual ad. Um, also, if you have any credits, if the credits were applied. So KW charges you right up front, your full budget. If you stop the ad at any time or cancel the ad, um, you do get a credit applied. So we have our credit. Um, card on file. If you don't, you can hit add new and then just go ahead and cr hit create campaign. All right. So the biggest difference when running this for this type of an ad, since we're, we don't want people to have to fill out a form and fill out another form and fill out another form to get their home value, right? They're going to stop. They're going to stop filling stuff out for you. All right. So the biggest difference in this one is instead of using the Facebook lead generation form, we use a site or landing page. And that's where we put in our page where we have the form. They come, they get plopped right in here when they hit the learn more or and uh, they fill out the form. You're going to get an email notification in your email. And you're also going to um, see the responses. So let me just fill this in really quick so you can see what it looks like. All right, address. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And again, whatever format you had requested them to give it is what they're going to give. All right, email. Mm -mm -mm. How many beds, how many baths, we're going to do three bedroom, two bath, no, preferred method, email or whatever and hit submit, okay. If they want to submit another response, they can. But now when I look at my Google form, let me just refresh this real quick, oh, it was already there responses is I got one response. There is my full summary of with the responses. All right, I can look at the questions. I can look at individual, like how they actually filled in the form. Um, or I can take a look at the spreadsheet. And there's my spreadsheet, all right? Time stamped and dated, and here are the answers, right? So again, if you if I had this in the right format and I had 40 people fill this out, I could just be copying and pasting into the import template um, into command and import those people and not have to hand type them. Otherwise, I'm typing them from this spreadsheet into command. Not a huge deal though, right? If, if, you know, you get five or six people to fill it out, um, our hope is you get more. <laughs> but um, that is the form, guys. That's how we can create the form, share the form, make a campaign. And now with the responses turned on, we can follow up uh, with our preferred method. All right, now I believe over in... Um, in your smart plans, I think, let me just come out of here, that they have a, there's something in the library here, not from Keller Williams. I think people have done this, um, like a home value, home anniversary, let's see home valuation. So smart plan is made to follow up with the sellers leads folks who requested a home evaluation from, uh, from you via Facebook or website. So if we hit the view steps, looks like she is sending a simple email, delaying, sending a text message, delaying, simple email. 
and then add to the monthly neighborhood nurture and then call to check in. So there's other people who have built these out. If you want to use um, somebody else's, right? Um, now there's multiple pages here. So just make sure you don't realize um, new home search. Let me just see. And you know, did you guys see this? Um, you know, people are, are being super smart. They are, where did that go? Um, they are putting in some of these smart plans in other languages. So if uh, you have Spanish speaking clients or you want to run that ad all in Spanish, um, your follow up can then be in Spanish, which would be really awesome. Free home evaluation, emails only, free home evaluation, emails only. So check them out, see what's in there. If you want to use one of them, all you have to do is hit add smart plan rename this, hit download, and now it's in your library. Um, the biggest thing though, guys, I keep getting questions about this is when you bring this over into my smart plans from the library, you have to open it up. You have to go through and proofread it because there are going to be some spots where you need to backfill with your information or make some changes. So Natalie was super nice to um, provide this. However, if I open it up, I want to make sure that none of Natalie's information's in there or something specific to the area in which she was promoting. So um, some are very general, but I've had somebody say, oh, like right here where it says your signature here. If you don't customize this, guys, that's what your client's going to see, your signature here, which looks like what? you didn't make this yourself. And we want it to look like you made it yourself uh, without actually having to do so. <laughs> all of that text and all of that thought process. This is somebody's wheelhouse. This is what somebody um, has talent in doing. So go ahead and make sure that if you're gonna use it, that you do um, customize it for yourself and proofread it. Like if you're hesitant to begin, search homes and your preferred, click here. Where is here going? That better be your website and not hers, right? <laughs> so make sure that you come in and proofread it. There will be just a few tweaks, but at least you didn't have to think of all that um, text and script writing in here. They did that for you, okay? And another great thing is with this new ad trigger event with the smart plans, when I'm putting in these peeps, these peeps who filled this out, whether I'm importing them, I'm going to apply a tag, um, or if I'm hand typing them in, I'm going to apply a tag that said home value or home value estimate. I can EV, e, uh, HVE, I can make whatever tag I want. And then when I'm putting them in to my database, I add the trigger event of that specific tag I created, and then this event is just going to trigger. I'm putting them in anyway, right? If I just add the tag while I'm putting them in, then the rest of this will happen automatically for me. Two birds, one stone, right? You got to put them in anyway. So huge value there, guys. <laughs> I hope this helps you. I hope it gives you some ideas. Now, this is just one manner of how you can use this uh, Google form. Um, you could find a paid Google, uh, not Google, I'm sorry, a paid home evaluation widget as well. There's several out there. Um, I just use Google form because it's free and we get it with G Suite. So, you know, might as well use what you got. Do we have any questions on the Google form? Um, or the ad, um, or how to embed it onto your sites. This video uh, was recorded, so it will go up onto my YouTube channel um, so that you guys can come back. Um, I have several videos that break down each individual thing, so if you are interested, you can go to um, YouTube and I have like just the Google form or just how to embed onto your um, website and how to run a home evaluation um, campaign. So I have them all three broken up, but this one will have everything all in one. So um, any questions before we end for today?
Got nothing. Nothing? Nothing? <laughs> I blew you away. You're speechless. Oh my I God. See. Yeah. <laughs> This was amazing. This was amazing. I can't wait to get started with this. Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. So I'll get this up uh, on my YouTube as soon as possible, just so you guys can have it to reference. Um, and hopefully uh, it brings some new clients in for you and you can get some listings. I know it's hard running around with all those buyers with no listings on the market. So. <laughs> Right. Yeah, it is. Right. <laughs> so, all right, guys, that's it for today. Have a wonderful afternoon. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place, and we'll learn some more things together. Okay. Yay. All Thank right. Thank you so much, Katie. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you. Have a good weekend. You too. Take care.